Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to continue uh, discussing theory of the firm, firms in the short run, looking at total costs and average costs, and how uh, to illustrate both of these. So on uh, the left side of the screen, graph A, we're looking at a firm, of course, in the short run, and in the short run, we're assuming that at least one factor of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, is fixed. You can have one or more uh, resources that are fixed, thus you are in the short run. So in graph A, we're looking at uh, the total costs of the firm and their total variable costs and their total fixed costs. First, we'll start with total fixed costs, costs that are fixed, and that could include items such as rent. All right, fixed costs are costs that are constant for the firm. Rent is an example of that. You might be renting a commercial space and you'll sign a contract for a particular sum of money. And in this case, we're going to assume that perhaps that sum of money is $100 per month in rent. And it will be constant for the duration of that contract, maybe a 12-month contract. for. So every month for a year, you're only paying $100 in rent. So that cost is fixed. And since it's fixed, we can draw a line in this graph. We're measuring costs on the y-axis and the quantity of output produced on the x-axis. And using rent as that simplified example, rent is constant regardless of the quantity of units that you're producing. So we see it's that perfectly elastic line, and we're going to label that the total fixed costs of the particular firm. Okay? Then you might have other costs. Uh, that are variable, all right? Variable costs are costs that are not constant, that they change. So some examples of that could be electricity. The amount of electricity you're demanding for your business could vary day to day. Maybe your electricity bill one month is $50, maybe the next month it's $80, maybe the following month it's $120, and then the month after that maybe it goes down to $80. So depending on your production and your energy needs, the variable costs for electricity will vary. It will go up and down. Other variable costs maybe includes wages, right? You might be employing some part-time workers in a particular month. Um, you might have some workers that are sick, um, and perhaps they have a contract where you, you're not required to pay them uh, sick pay during that time, just as an example. Um, so wages could vary month to month. You, be, you could be employing more labor resources, less re, labor resources over time, depending on your production needs. Other examples could be water, water usage in the building that your, work, your, your workers are operating in. So these bills that appear every month for a particular business will vary month to month. Electricity, wages, water, uh, perhaps, um, you know, internet usage, could be constant, maybe it's variable, but these are just some examples. And in graph A, we're just gonna keep this you know, very simple. I'm just gonna assume that the variable costs are rising as I increase production, but that it's fairly constant as we increase production, which is not necessarily true. It'd probably be a curve that would wave up and down as you increase production. But just for the sake of simplicity, we're just keeping it as a straight line. And these total variable costs can include the purchase of more and more resources. As you increase outputs, you need to buy more and more inputs. So the total variable costs are rising as you increase production. Total costs, which we see here, total cost is the sum of the total fixed costs and the total variable costs. And what's interesting to note about this is that we can see that at the quantity of Q1, the distance between points A and B is exactly the same as your fixed costs. Our fixed costs runs from zero to 100. That's the rent. Thus, it should be that your, vic your total costs minus your fixed costs is equal to your variable costs. So the total variable cost, the distance between the total variable cost and the total fixed costs has to be the same value as your fixed costs. So we see that the total cost curve and the total variable cost curve are parallel to each other because the distance between the two is your fixed costs. Again, we see at the quantity of output at Q2, between point C and point D, the value is $100. 280 
minus 180 is 100, which is again reflective of your fixed rental cost. Okay? So let's go ahead and illustrate the average fixed, average variable, the marginal cost curves, and so forth, because this will these will be the curves that you'll be utilizing to illustrate a firm in perfect competition, uh, monopolies, monopolistic competition, and so on. First, let's look at the total fixed costs, which we're going to be calculating into the average fixed cost. That's telling us that for each unit of output, on average, how much of those fixed costs is it carrying? So let's say again that you have that fixed cost of $100 and you've only produced one unit. So average fixed cost is the total fixed cost divided by the quantity produced and we've only produced one unit. So the average fixed cost is $100. That tells us that from that first unit of output that you've produced, it's carrying $100 of fixed costs. But what happens when you ramp up production? Let's say that you're now producing 10 units. So the average fixed cost is 100 divided by 10 units tells us that each unit is only carrying $10 of fixed costs on average. Let's say you ramp up production, you reach 100 units. So you have your fixed cost of $100 of rent per month divided by the 100 units that you've produced in that month. And that tells us that on average, each unit of output that you've produced is only carrying $1 of fixed costs. So what do we notice? That with average fixed costs, the curve, the line that we're going to draw is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and start to approach zero. It will never hit zero, but it will become, it will start approaching zero. So how do we illustrate that? So it will look something like this. Okay, your average fixed cost curve would probably have a shape like this. All right, it's going to run down and start approaching zero. And so we'll label that our average fixed cost. That as we produce oops, more and more units of output, the fixed cost on average gets smaller and smaller and smaller for each of those units that we produce. All right, so that's kind of a sunk cost, a fixed cost that uh, entrepreneurs are not really concerned with. Since it's constant, they're not really focused on how to minimize their fixed cost because they can't. What entrepreneurs are really going to be focused on is how to minimize their variable cost, which is a cost that they can potentially control. So average fixed costs have this shape. Okay, next, let's go ahead and draw our supply curve. Our supply curve is our marginal cost curve, and that's the change in the total costs divided by the change in the quantity of outputs produced, which is also the same as the change in the total variable costs because fixed costs are constant. We can ignore the fixed costs and just focus on the change in the variable costs divided by the change in the quantity of output, and that gives us our supply curve. And in a previous video, we've seen how the supply curve has this shape. So I would draw the supply curve next. It has this shape, right? S1 is equal to the marginal cost of production, right? We see that it has this backwards J shape. Why? Because we know that at this point here, this is where the law of diminishing marginal returns starts to set in. As we add more and more variable inputs, they confront the limitations of their fixed resources. And so the marginal productivity starts to decline, leading to the marginal cost of production rising. Okay, so I would draw that next AFC and then MC having this type of backwards J shape. Next, the total variable costs. We want to calculate, on average, each unit of output is carrying what value of variable costs. Average variable costs are calculated as the total variable cost divided by the quantity of output. And we've seen in a previous video how the marginal cost curve um, dictates to the average variable and the average total cost curves, um, what to do. We've talked about our marginal grade versus our um, average grade. So average variable costs could have this potential shape. Right? It comes down, it hits the uh, supply curve and the marginal cost curve, and then it starts to rise. And we'll label that our average variable 
costs. Why is that, right? Again, we've seen in a previous video, if we think about our marginal grade, here we see that the MC curve is below the AVC curve or the average curve. The marginal uh, cost is kind of thinking about your marginal grade. What's the grade you get on your next test? So let's say your average is a C, but you score, unfortunately, a D on your next exam. That D is going to pull the average down, right? So your performance on each test impacts the your average performance. So as long as the marginal cost curve is less than the average variable cost curve, the average is being pulled down. Then the two are equal to each other. MC and AVC are equal to each other. And we have to remember that we have to draw the supply curve intersecting with the average variable cost curve at its lowest point. Then beyond that point, we see that the MC curve is now greater than the average variable cost. So you score an A when you're uh, on your next test when your average is a C, so it starts to pull the average upward. Okay. Next, we need to draw our total cost curve. Right? So our total cost curve, as we see here, is the sum of the total fixed costs plus the total variable cost, which we see in graph A. Total cost is the sum of the total variable costs plus the fixed costs. The distance between total cost and total variable cost is the value of our fixed costs. In terms of the average, the average total cost is the total cost of all fixed and variable divided by the quantity of output. That tells us, on average, for each unit of output, how much of the fixed and variable costs it is carrying. And this is important information to the entrepreneur to know the average cost of their output because it will help them decide their price. They will price above the cost to generate profit. So the average total cost would have this type of shape. Now, one thing that's important to note is that the average total cost is the sum of the average variable plus the average fixed. So we just have to add the, the fixed cost to our variable cost. But we notice that the average fixed cost gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that, dis that the distance between the average total cost curve and the average variable cost curve must also be getting smaller and smaller. So it'll probably have this type of shape. All right, it will intersect. Oop, let's not draw a straight line. We don't want a straight line. It's going to intersect. The ATC will intersect with the MC at its lowest point, and then it's going to start getting closer and closer and closer to the ABC curve. All right. The distance between the ATC and the ABC is reflective of the distance between the AVC, I'm, I'm sorry, between the x-axis and the AFC curve. All right. So I'm just going to erase this so we can label that point. And this is our average total cost curve. Again, it's intersecting at the lowest point. So the average total cost, it starts to come down. It intersects with the marginal cost at its lowest point, And then starts to rise. We start to see that the AVC starts approaching the ATC. And that's reflective of this. If I draw a straight line here, just go ahead and draw that. If I draw a straight line here, in theory, right, the distance between, we're going to label that point A, this is point A and point B, the distance between point A and point B should be the same as that distance between point C and point D. Right? It's the average variable plus the average fixed. And since the average fixed gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the average variable is getting closer and closer and closer to the average total. Okay, So hopefully this is helpful in understanding that relationship between the total costs, the total variable costs, the total fixed costs, and the average fixed costs, average variable costs, average total costs, and the supply curve equaling the marginal cost curve. This particular aspect of your graph is important because in... Um, future graphs, when you're illustrating perhaps perfect competition or monopolies or monopolistic competition, you'll be illustrating the supply curve equal to the MC curve and the average total cost curve, and in some occasions also illustrating the average variable cost curve.
And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and for, don't forget to subscribe and to like. And I'm just going to label one more point over here because I will provide information in the YouTube section. Uh, in the, the video information section will provide some information regarding the analysis uh, about what I've just discussed. So I'm going to label Q3 to help us with that in that information section. And that's it. Thank you so much.